So thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Um, my name is Patty Schramm. I'm the Parent Resource Coordinator Trainer for the SALT Talks. Um, so tonight, we've been talking about this whole month. We've been talking about work hard, play hard. So the first three weeks, we talked about um, employment, you know, creating your employment um, network and, and all that. Um, and usually with SALT Talks, we have a lot of, you know, after this, we're going to be getting into guardianship and um, benefits and all that. So I figured it was a good time at the uh, end of February here just to pause and just look at what is fun. What can we do that's fun in the area in Southwest Ohio? You know, are, are there camps? Are there just regular recreational activities? You know, what is available for families with individuals with disabilities? So tonight we have several speakers here. And um, and I'll I'll let them talk about you know introduce themselves when they get ready to present, but I tried to get a variety, so we have um, Josh Wellner and Kathy um, Kleiser from Green County. Um, they handle a lot of the all hands. Uh, Josh has the all hands in, which is open to everybody um, for activities, and he'll be able to talk a little bit about that. We have stepping zones here. Um, Patrick Ober, the director, and we have Luke Five Adventures, um, which is Kevin. Um, I'm sorry if I say your last name. Is it Schwing Schwinger? Oh, you're you're muted. Schwiger, strong. Schwiger. E. Okay, Schwiger. Okay, thank you. And um, we'll have uh, Montgomery County jump you on here in a little bit. But I also have several resources that are out there in our Google Salt Drive. Um, where you can, and I put the link, I'm pretty sure I put the link there in the chat box. If you didn't see it, we'll, um, we'll share it again, but that's where a lot of the flyers and a lot of the presentation information is for tonight. So um, I didn't check to see who wanted to go first, but if, if no one has, you know, if anybody needs to go first, let me know, but I'm going to, if, if it's okay, I'll let Stepping Stones start. If that, are you okay with that? Okay, I did make you presenter. So if you want to share your screen or I can pull it up either way. If you could pull it up, that would be great. All right, one second. All right, everybody see that okay? Yeah, maybe if you could uh, uh, zoom out just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, that way you can kind of see the whole. Is it too small? No, 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 too big. Too big. Oh, I got zoom. Oops. Wow, that's too far. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. There. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Well, th thank you so much for being here, uh, for allowing me to be here. I appreciate uh, the, the invite. And Yep. Yeah, so for those of you that are unfamiliar with myself or our organization, uh, my name is Patrick Ober. I'm Director of Programs and Operations at Stepping Stones. We are a nonprofit organization in greater Cincinnati. We serve individuals with developmental disabilities, children, teens, and adults. And um, while we have three different major program areas uh, that, that, that we provide, uh, education programs for individuals with developmental disabilities and significant uh, behavior needs and academic needs that are unable to be served in their home school districts. Uh, we provide an education program for those individuals. We also have an adult day program where we serve adults with developmental disabilities. But the uh, program I'd like to talk with you all about tonight is our recreation and leisure programs. These are probably the programs that if you've heard of Stepping Stones, you're most familiar with. Uh, we started back in 1963 as a, uh, a summer camp for uh, children with developmental disabilities. And uh, we've held those, those rec and leisure programs, those day camps and those overnight camps uh, throughout the uh, entirety of the time that Stepping Stones has been around. So um, I think we're, if I'm doing my math right, about year 61 uh, of having camp programs in the greater Cincinnati area. So if you could go ahead and scroll down Wonderful. So first, I'd just like to share what we do in our rec and leisure programs. So uh, we provide year round recreation programs at two different locations in the Cincinnati area. Uh, one is at our given road location, which is in 
kind of the intersection of Indian Hill, Terrace Park, and Milford um, on Given Road. And then we also have a program, and we'll, I'll talk in detail about both, um, another program out in Batavia called Camp Allen. And that's out on uh, Lake Allen Road in Batavia. Oh, man, now I have to think of where uh, the, the, the street that it's off of. Um, now nah, I'm blanking on it, but I, I have the address for you later. Uh, he, both of those programs are, are focused on providing opportunities for children, teens, and adults that um, offer ways for them to feel included in those programs, um, you know, be with groups of peers that they're similarly situated with. Uh, both of the programs that we offer, both the day programs and overnight programs, focus on socialization, um, helping those individuals that we serve um, through the activities we provide and, and the training that we offer our staff to really focus on helping them learn how to socialize, interact, and engage with one another. We're really focused on providing those um, meaningful opportunities for them to do outside of either their core family or their kind of core support networks. Uh, where all of our programs are community respite programs. So they are programs where individuals come to our sites and we serve them there. So it's an opportunity for them to, you know, either um, come in and see old friends or meet new friends. But we focus on that socialization, independent skills, you know, doing things for themselves rather than having other people do them for them and making them feel like they're included in, in something that uh, they really enjoy. Um, the programs that we offer through Recreation and Leisure serve, as I mentioned, people across all age ranges. So um, our day programs offer services for people as young as five, and our um, uh, adult programs and overnight programs serve people um, up into and past age 65. I think we the, the oldest person we've had that has attended one of our overnight programs, I think, uh, was close to 70. So we really span that age range and try to offer opportunities for someone, regardless of where they are um, in their developmental life. Go to the next slide. So I wanted to quickly give you some common names. Um, if you reach out to Stepping Stones and speak to anyone at our organization, you're likely to come across one of these individuals. So I just wanted to put some familiarity there. Uh, myself, I'm the Director of Programs and Operations, so I oversee all of our programs. Uh, the director of our recreation and leisure programs is John Ahrens. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, two different programs at two different locations. Uh, the day programs, which primarily serve children and teens with developmental disabilities, is run by Vanessa Darley, and that's at our Given Road campus in Indian Hill. And then um, our overnight programs had been run by Sarah Overholtz for uh, a couple of years, but we recently uh, had her move into a compliance and training specialist position. So she oversees all of our compliance requirements um, through DODD and other state and local regulations and helps train our staff. And we are recently welcoming a new individual to serve in our overnight uh, program manager position, Chance Cole. Uh, finally, the person that if any of you reach out to Stepping Stones and talk with someone, you're likely to talk with Jeannie Ludwig. She's our client services staff. She handles all direct communications with families, with SSAs. Um, so if you're going to reach out regarding registration or questions about enrollment, she's likely the person you'll talk to. So I very quickly wanted to mention, you know, with our programs, who are the staff that, that run or, or um, staff our programs and how do we train them? Um, I know a lot of this are questions that, that parents are, are very curious about. And historically, um, our, our program staff that work in our day camps and our overnight camps, and then as I'll mention later on, our fall, winter, spring programs, are high school and college age students. Um, they're primarily those that have a passion for the field. Some of them, it might be their first time working in the developmental disability field. Some may have family connections or have history or past job experience. Uh, we accept individuals from, from all fields because uh, we, we pride ourselves on being able to train them to understand how to work with folks with developmental disabilities. Uh, but we are lucky enough to have folks that major in uh, psychology, special education, social work, occupational therapy, physical therapy, rec therapy, um, as some of the many uh, majors that we uh, pull for our, our rec and leisure programs. All of our programs, and I'll talk at the very end about our criteria of service, but we do provide a participant to staff ratio of approximately six to one at all of our programs. Um, historically, Stepping Stones did provide one-on-one -on -one support uh, due to staffing issues and kind of changes in the landscape. 
um, we have unfortunately been unable to provide that, although we do try to make sure that all of the activities are adaptable and available for, for individuals. Um, but we do have some criteria that we look at to determine whether someone would be a good fit in our programs. Uh, but just wanted to provide that as information that all of our ratios try to operate at that six, if at all possible, and then provide additional support when and if it's needed for individuals. All of our staff that work at our Rec and Leisure programs are trained on DODD required training for direct support professionals. So it includes all of the necessary uh, trainings that are mandated by the state. Um, and and as some of those are listed here. We also do make sure we provide program specific training to our staff um, related to things that uh, may be covered in the DODD training, but also maybe more specific to our locations, our facilities and the activities that we run. Um, so we do focus on disability education and awareness. All our staff are trained on trauma and empathy informed care. We have emergency procedures and protocols that we follow at each of our locations. Uh, we have staff that are uh, highly trained and, and educate all of our incoming staff on behavior supports and how to de-escalate and manage behavior regulation. Um, everyone is first aid and CPR certified. And then we also talk about activity planning and adaptation for all of our staff. So they understand if they've got someone in their group that may not be able to access the activity in a certain way because of their disability or some other reason, that they're able to figure out how to adapt it to make sure that it fits their needs. So now I'll give you a little bit of uh, info for those of you that are unaware of each of our campuses um, and, and the programs that we offer. So our Given Road Campus is where we hold our summer day camp uh, for kids and teens with developmental disabilities. It's also where we hold our um, Saturday clubs, which happens during the fall, winter, spring. Um, at our Given Road Campus in Indian Hill, so this is again at that intersection of Indian Hill, Terrace Park, and Milford, uh, we have a 23-acre campus that we utilize for these programs. Uh, we have accessible bathrooms. We have a swimming pool and a lake that we use for both fishing as well as paddle boating. Uh, we have hiking trails or walking trails that are paved that we utilize for individuals. It's part of, you know, getting from one activity space to the other. But we also have, you know, big trails that we can use for individuals that may need to cool down or, or, or need that space and, and, and have that need to walk around so that they can um, de-escalate or deregulate or help regulate themselves and, and uh, get back to the group and, and the activity that we're running. Uh, we have a gymnasium that we utilize as well as other indoor program spaces. So our summer camp as well as our fall programs have a combination of indoor and outdoor activities. Uh, we do have a registered nurse that is on staff during all rec and leisure programs. Um, so we do have a nurse's station available for their use that, that allows us to provide any necessary care, medication, administration um, that, that campers may need. We have an outdoor playground as well as other sheltered outdoor spaces that we use at our given campus as well. And we have some of those pictures that share uh, some of the, the activities that our, our participants engage in. One thing that we don't have noted on the features is we also have a creek nearby um, our lake that we do nature, go creaking and kind of explore um, the, the waterways out there and, and use for different activities as well as our lake. Uh, so lo some logistical information about our day camp. So uh, it, it's, as I said, operated at our given campus. So that's located at 5650 Given Road. We operate for nine weeks in the summer. Uh, this summer, we start, our first week is on June 3rd, and we run through the final week of July, ending August 2nd, with uh, no camp happening the days of July 4th and 5th. We do have a shortened week for our day camp that week. Um, enrollment, if anyone is interested in enrolling, in enrolling happens on a week to week basis. So when you register, you register for an entire week. So we have some individuals that register just for one week, some register for three, some register for all nine. Um, our ability to enroll you um, once you register is based on how many um, individuals have registered at that point and what age group they are in, because we do group our participants based on, you know, a year or two of an age range. Uh, we do serve individuals at our summer camp ages 5 to 18. Cost listed is $69 per day, and that rate is stable, um, whether you're utilizing a DODD waiver, a county voucher, or paying privately or through some other means. Um, one thing I did not note on here, but um, I, I do want to mention, we also do accept Ohio RISE as a form of payment for camp as well. And then just some brief information, you know, our daily schedules, 
we, we structure them um, typically to have Monday, Wednesday, Friday be similar, and then Tuesday, Thursday be similar. Um, uh, in our, our activities that we offer at day camp include arts and crafts, sports and games. We have sensory activities. We do nature and waterfront out by our lakes and creeks. Um, and those can include swimming uh, at our swimming pools, uh, fishing at our lakes, paddle boating at our lakes. And actually, we did just recently this past year get a pontoon boat. So we're hoping to be able to uh, get some uh, rides on the pontoon boat at our lake as well. Pivoting over to our Allen campus. So this is our overnight camp location out in Batavia, Ohio. Uh, this is geared towards older teenagers and adults with developmental disabilities. Uh, we've got a little bit more space out there. We've got about 50 acres, give or take, uh, that we utilize as part of this campground. Uh, we have accessible bathrooms and accessible cabins. We do have the bunk beds, as you see here. Um, we also have a commercial kitchen that is staffed and uh, is able to meet dietary needs and dietary restrictions, where we provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for all participants and staff. Um, we also have accessible hiking trails out there as well. Uh, we have a few more fun amenities outdoors that we like to tell people about. We also have a swimming pool at the out, or at the uh, Allen campus. We have three different lakes, uh, two that we actively use right now. Uh, they include uh, fishing, canoeing, um, and uh, paddle boating as well. Uh, we have an archery range out there where we're able to provide adaptive archery opportunities for uh, participants. We also have some indoor program spaces as well as outdoor program spaces we use. We do have a nurse's station out there as well. Like I said, we have RNs that are staffed um, at our overnight camp. We don't have overnight RNs, but we do have nurses on staff from about 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. every program day. Um, another thing to note that's not on our features list is we do have a putt-putt golf course. We have a nine hole golf course um, that we were able to finally finish and, and put into operation last summer. Um, we also have an outdoor bowling alley that an Eagle Scout uh, built for us a few years back. So we have the ability to you know, do basketball, soccer, volleyball, as well as some bowling activities for individuals out there as well. More logistical information about our overnight staycations. Uh, so those operate on the same uh, schedule or, or, or uh, time frame as our day camp. Uh, first session is um, in, in a slight difference here for our overnight vacations. They run from Sunday afternoon to Thursday afternoon. So it's uh, five full days of programming. So our first session starts June 2nd, that Sunday, and ends that Thursday, August 1st. Uh, one major difference with our day camp is that we have no overnight camp the entire week of July 4th. Uh, again, as, as similar with our, our day uh, camp program, enrollment is per full week, so you enroll for the full week. Uh, we serve individuals starting at age 16, um, and we do, we do not have a cap um, on age. We just put 65 plus. Uh, the cost is, again, aligned with the reimbursement rates for community respite programs for uh, uh, overnights. Um, the cost is uh, $920 per overnight staycation through June. And then when the reimbursement rates increase starting July 1st, we'll have a commensurate uh, increase in the uh, rate for overnight camp as well. Uh, same with our day camp. We accept DODD waivers, county vouchers, private pay, and Ohio. And uh, we try to keep a similar kind of a uh, program schedule as our day camp. So you'll see some of the similar activities, but we do kind of add some different stuff as well. Um, we have game nights, we have dances, talent shows, uh, we do movie nights. One of the great things that we are able to offer out at Camp Allen, um, it, it's a uh, property that actually is owned by the Rotary Club, the Cincinnati Rotary Club, and they allow us to use it uh, for the purpose of providing programs for folks with developmental disabilities. So they actually coordinate every Tuesday during our summer program when the weather permits it uh, to have a hot air balloon come out. And so they do tethered hot air balloon rides on one of our big, huge meadows. Um, so the participants get to experience being up in a hot air balloon, which is really, really exciting to see. Uh, we also do karaoke and other uh, programs. And we also, for both of our programs, try and bring in outside um, agencies or organizations or individuals to provide programming to uh, them. So that can include folks from maybe creative aging that do music shows or talent shows, magicians. Uh, we might have a petting zoo come out one week. And each of the weeks for both day camp and overnight camp are themed. 
So if you're interested in registering and, you know, have someone that's really interested in space or science or music, for example, you can see on our website uh, which week we're having kind of that themed week and uh, register someone for that so that they can have um, activities involved that they're really interested in or a part of. So I know we're focusing on summer, but I did also want to shamelessly plug some of our fall, winter, spring programs while I have your attention. Um, <clears throat> our weekend respite program also occurs at that same Camp Allen location out in Batavia, and we operate that bi-weekly during the fall, winter, spring months. Um, so, so basically the easiest way to think about it is it's kind of a shortened version of our overnight staycations. We try to offer a lot of the same activities and opportunities, unfortunately, because it's colder out, you know, we've got to close the pool down and the lakes might not be available. Um, but we do provide that Friday through Sunday. So it's a little bit different schedule, um, but it's, it's, it's weekend focused, that opportunity for individuals to come out and spend the weekend with us at our campground. Um, cost there is for 60 per session in a per session. And again, we um, accept the same sources of funding as we do at our overnight camps, waivers, county vouchers, Ohio Rise, and private pay. A uh, little bit of information, some of the same stuff we've mentioned previously. You know, we really try to focus on creative arts and crafts, nature, wellness, and exercise activities. Uh, we do game nights, we do dances, we do talent shows. If it's around a holiday, we try to theme it and provide activities for that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, with our uh, overnight camps, we have on-site licensed nurses at all of these programs as well. Uh, our commercial kitchen is also available and, and used and is able to accommodate di dietary restrictions or dietary needs. And much like our summer staff, our seasonal staff are also trained according to DODD guidelines, as well as program specific requirements. And then uh, over at our given campus where we serve kids and teens with developmental disabilities, we also have Saturday clubs that we offer for those um, individuals also in the fall, winter, spring months. Those are at our Indian Hill location and we alternate weeks um, providing a kids club for um, individuals ages five to 15 or 16, and then a young adults club the following week on a Saturday from it for individuals 16 to 30. Both clubs operate from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m and you see the cost associated with those clubs as well. Once again, we try to mirror um, and keep our Rec and Leisure programs pretty consistent. So we offer some most of the same activities that we can, and obviously weather permitting, we try to get outside and use the outdoor spaces as often as we can. Um, and then when it's colder, we utilize our indoor spaces, but we make sure we incorporate arts and crafts, nature activities when applicable, sensory activities, sports and games, and different seasonal projects. And much like our day camp and our camps out in Batavia, on-site licensed nursing at all, um, during all programs, um, adaptive activities are offered and our seasonal staff are trained in DOD requirements. Last, as I kind of mentioned at the very beginning, we do have a criteria of service. Um, that, that, that's in part due to the fact that we want to make sure that our activities are promoting socialization and interaction and we're offering activities that engage groups together um, and, and also recognizing that over the past few years um, we've had some staffing challenges where in the past we might have been able to staff enough to provide one-on-one -on -one supports but unfortunately just haven't been able to see that trend uh, come back at this point. Uh, our criteria of service changes year to year and we always look at it, but I did want to make everyone aware of some of the things that we look at when we do our pre-program assessments. So we don't have anything that's a hard, no, you cannot attend program if this happens. Um, all um, potential participants or people that register for our programs go through an assessment process with one of our program managers where they ask questions to understand, you know, the likes and dislikes, communication, ability and needs what kind of support an individual might need to be successful at our programs. Some of the things that we do look at when we're considering eligibility for the programs include the, the, the following bullet, po bullet pointed list. Um, we are able to provide personal care assistance, but the closer you, you get to total care and total assistance needs and that kind of one-on-one -on -one care, 
um, the more difficult it may be for us to serve that individual given our staffing ratios and our program capacity needs. Uh, we do recognize that small kids, you know, five, six, seven years old may need some more assistance. Um, so we try to accommodate as best we can. Uh, we are mindful of anyone that exhibits extreme aggression um, towards others, has uh, flight risks. You know, we do have large amounts of space at our camp. And while we do have fenced in areas that, that cordon off all of our camp spaces, we, you know, do want to make sure that an individual that is attending our camp tries to remain as safe as possible and isn't a flight risk while they're here. Um, other things that we do note are, are kind of involved um, or, or included in the criteria below. Um, and like I said, you know, one of the things that we really try and focus on is making sure that individuals are interacting with each other, are engaged in activities, and we're trying to facilitate that social interaction and communication. Um, so that's something that we want to make sure that individuals are interested in and, and to a certain extent, you know, um, uh, either capable or have the capacity to do so and are able to, with staff support, you know, engage in activities where it might be a group setting um, rather than a one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, only other thing I'd like to definitely note is uh, for our overnight programs, um, you know, we've got wonderful staff. Um, they sleep in the cabins with the individuals that we serve. So while, you know, we recognize everybody has their own needs and everyone might wake up from time to time, we want to make sure that our staff are, are getting a good night's sleep along with our program participants so that they can adequately serve and supervise everybody the following day. So one of the things we look at is, you know, what is their capacity or ability to sleep through the night or, you know, not become too disruptive or, or, or um, you know, require too much of staff so that we can make sure that we've got staff that are ready to go and able to provide uh, quality supervision and quality uh, programming for participants every day that are with us. Happy to answer any questions that any of you have. I know I gave you a ton of information. I uh, tried to go through it as quickly as I could. Um, we do have the website right there if you're interested in more information. Um, it's easy to register for our programs. We also have the phone number on our um, website that'll take you to write to Jeannie Ludwig, who is our client services staff. Um, but if any of you have any questions right now about our programs or the people we serve, I'm happy to answer those while I'm here. Okay, let me see. I'm just looking in the chat. Um, real Michelle, quick. Michelle, thanks for sending that email or the, the link to the website. I appreciate that. And yes, then, you can get, so, okay. oh, so sorry. Yeah, I just go saw ahead. Michelle's uh, comment. So if you're unable to afford the Felix, you can get, yep. Yeah, so we, we accept county vouchers as, as a form of payment. Um, two things that I also did not note, but um, feel free to call us or reach out to us about this. Um, so for um, individuals that may um, be, be low income or ha have financial assistance needs, there are limited opportunities for financial assistance available, especially at day camp. We also um, are part of a program called Cincinnati Dreams Come True, which um, is, uh, I think, a private donor that funds a few weeks of summer day camp for a select number of individuals every summer. Um, and so that would be for our summer day camp, ages five through 18. So some individuals, if they are interested in camp but cannot afford it, can be put on that list for consideration. We don't make decisions regarding who ultimately is awarded the Cincinnati Dreams Come True. I don't know, you call them scholarships. Um, that's an outside entity or, or individual that, that's kind of in charge of that foundation or funding source. Um, but that is something that is available. Uh, the other thing I can note <clears throat> is that we also have um, something called the Good Shepherd Grant. So that's something we try to renew every single year, but it is a, a funding source that allows individuals, and it's a very broad and general criteria you have to meet. I will say, kind of to slightly answer um, Kathy's question, for the Good Shepherd Grant, you do have to be an Ohio resident, um, but that does offer you the opportunity to attend either a weekend respite program or an overnight staycation program for free. Um, and, and the Good Shepherd Grant um, funds the cost of the individual attending that. I, there, there's limited amounts of times you can utilize the Good Shepherd Grant. I think it's once per calendar year. But if you're someone who's interested in, you know, the programs, but doesn't know if you'd like it or not and want to try it out without trying to incur the cost, um, you, you can try and apply and see if the Good Shepherd Grant is a, is a possibility for you. And yes, Kathy, to ask, answer your question. Um, the cost is same for out-of-state participants 
um, as well as uh, in-state participants. That's just kind of the flat rate we do have. And we do have individuals from Kentucky and from Indiana. Um, we actually, I think, in our rec program, serve individuals from about 25 different counties in Ohio. Uh, so we've got folks that travel down from Toledo and Cleveland uh, uh, to attend the overnight camps. And then, Michelle, uh, your question, either parents or um, we do have some individuals that utilize uh, non-medical transportation uh, to, uh, to attend our programs. But yes, we don't offer at this time any transportation services to and from uh, the program locations. All right. Thank you. Patrick, for all that information on stepping stones. Um, as we go through some of the other presentations tonight, feel free to put your questions in the chat and then whoever it applies to can just answer it in the chat then too, as we are going through the presentations. Um, Josh, are you? Yes, ready to roll. How's it going, everybody? My name is Josh and I work for the Greene County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And we started a program right before the pandemic called All Hands In. It's based off of the uh, Butler County's FANS program, Friends, Allies, and Neighbors. And our goal is to figure out how we can help um, our folks gain greater access to the community through the development of relationships with community members. So we really strive to hold events that are not DD segregated and that are open to the entire community. So I'm gonna share my screen really quick and show you our newsletters to get the ball rolling here. So we per we do several events every month. Um, the purpose of our events, like I said, they're open to the entire community, most of them. Every now and then we do um, a Green County eligible specific event. Like if it's something we're paying for, like, like going to a Dragons game or something like that. But most of our events are not like that um, and are open to anybody from any county with or without a disability. So we do things like we do karaoke. We started doing karaoke once a month where we just meet at a restaurant and we use their party room and everybody just comes in and orders their own food. We don't pay for the food. It's people's responsibility to come and do that. Um, same thing kind of with this coffee talk thing we're trying to get off the ground. It's just a meeting once a month in the community where we just meet for coffee. People buy their own coffee and hang out. Um, we, we, we do some unique things like this Dungeons and Dragons group. This is kind of the direction we're leaning in. We're trying to do more uh, groups that are not um, actually staffed or supported by us. This Dungeons and Dragons thing um, happened because a group of kids wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons, and I have no idea of how to do that. So we just found the community supports to get this off um, up and running. And then I, for, for months, was attending it, fostering it. But now I don't even attend this event anymore. It's their own thing. And this is kind of the direction we're heading in. We have a group of YouTube uh, video editors. So a lot of what, most of what we do on this list is directed by the interest of the people we serve. Um, but anybody can go to these events we started doing um, a Nerf thing for younger kids. This is for kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, and it's just a time for, again, anybody can come to this. We provide dinner and snacks and people just come have a great time with Nerf guns. Um, we, do, we do a thing called Diners Club every month where we meet at a restaurant in the community. Again, people pay for their own food, but it's just an opportunity for us to be in a community setting doing things that the community does. Um, we do a movie night. Um, my coworker and I, Megan, rent a, a theater and we, we do a movie every night. Um, we have lots of other stuff going on, like the Parent Support Advisory Council. We just have like a, a ton of stuff going on. We do some, um, recent, some bigger events. Um, so I'm going to show you something else really quick. Um, so we do every year. So for the third year, this will be the third year, June 1st. This is last year's flyer. We do, um, uh, this is the second annual Challenging Perceptions Adaptive Trail Race. And it's actually interesting that Loop 5 is here also because they're the ones that make this possible. So we do a, a fully off-road 5K. This is probably my favorite event we do of the year because it's not technically the Green County Board of DD doing this event, it's the Ohio River Roadrunners doing this event with the support of Luke Five Adventures. And what I love so much about this event is there's probably not an event like this for hundreds of miles around because, I mean, 
trust me, you can do an adaptive race like on a bike path, but doing it on trails is something completely different. And so, so a lot of our folks have never gotten to be in the woods. And what I like so much about it is they're getting to be in the woods alongside people without disabilities that are just running a 5K. And that's really what we want is we want like that level of accessibility. So this is the direction that we're driving in now. We're looking for more community groups to partner with. Um, this fall, we're going to be hosting the first ever Tour Day Green County. We're going to be doing or partnering with a couple of cycling clubs in the area to do an adaptive cycling event. And our goal is just to help our folks um, just access places they've never been before. I, I recently had a conversation with the, um, the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission about accessibility. And it, it was interesting because they thought we were going to talk about crosswalks and curb cuts and that kind of stuff. But what we actually talked about was um, kind of like redefining accessibility as do I have a reason to be in this space? Have I been invited in this space? Am I part of a group of people that uses this space? And for people with disabilities, the answer to those questions is usually no. So even if even if the bike path is wheelchair accessible, it doesn't mean anybody's gonna use it if no one's ever shown them how to use it or where it is. So we're trying to figure out different ways to expose our folks to all of this stuff. So that's our adaptive trail race. And then lastly, we share most of what we do. It's not that exciting. Where is the, oh, I can't find, oh, sorry guys. I'm a real clod hopper. I'm not, my Zoom skills have uh, atrophied since the world kind of went back to normal here. So we have a, um, we, use, we share most of what we do on our Facebook page. So I'm gonna put this in the, the chat. Anybody is welcome to attend our events. If anybody wants to get on our newsletter, our mailing list, all they have to do is shoot me an email and I will add them to our mailing list. And we want people coming to our events. They're they're growing now that the pandemic's over. Things are starting to trend back up again. We did karaoke last week and we had 70 people that showed up for that. Um, the only challenge, like I said, is we want the community to join us. So we're trying to find more community partnerships so people without disabilities join us at our events. So that is kind of um, what we're about. Oh, there it is. Somebody already put it in there. Thank you, Michelle. So that's it. So we want people to come to our events. Um, like I said, we're in Greene County. Most of our events are in Greene County. We get a ton of people from Montgomery County that join us. We've had people come as, like, we've had, for Dungeons and Dragons, we've had people that have come from 50 miles away because we're the only people doing an adaptive Dungeons and Dragons thing that I'm aware of. So, but... I just want to stress all those events, everything that we do is it's really directed mostly by the interest of the people we're serving. And if we see a common trend and we think that there's enough traction that we can get something going, we'll, we will try to do that. But we really, really want to get these like independent things going like, like this, the, my YouTube editors I'm getting ready to start working with again. It's something that I just don't have the time to fully support. But I want to I want to support their interest in YouTube. So how can I provide a place and the resources they need to do it without me? Because one of, one of the things I found is that if, if if this thing that we're building is built upon my personality and my presence, if I ever leave, everything's going to crumble and fall apart. So we're trying to build things that are that are sustainable and that that they don't need us. They don't need, I, we don't want to even need the Green County Board of Developmental Disabilities. We want them to be able to have a life and do what they want to do without any supports. So that's about it. But I would love if anybody ever has any questions, wants to talk, shoot me an email. I'll put my all my contact information down here in the chat. And if anybody wants to chat, I am available. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. And that that gives us a, a leeway into our next speaker <laughs> a little bit here. We have um, Kevin with Luke Five um, Adventures, and I think it's just important, like you know, as parents, just to you know, under, just get their kids connected with these groups. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Kevin. Did you did you need me? Did you uh, want me yeah, to share? Yeah, if you'll if you'll share. Okay. Uh, my yeah, stuff. I'll go ahead and um, you can go ahead and start talking. Yeah, uh, you know, as as you're uh, pick, uh, pulling that up. I just think it's cool to have uh, Josh and the gang from Greene County and then also um, Patrick from Stepping Stones because we've collaborated on multiple occasions with both of those uh, groups and had a ton of fun. And I really enjoy Josh's attitude there of getting out uh, not only 
on the accessible trails, but beyond. I've had um, some really funny conversations with park people um, over the years, and they say, oh, you should come to our park because we have this accessible trail or whatever. And uh, and I, I have to say, well, yeah, that's great. And I'm glad you have that. But where your accessible trail ends, that's where our trail begins. And so uh, Luke 5 Adventures, unlike Stepping Stones, it's been around for 60 years or so. Uh, we are kind of babies in this world, uh, just entering our fifth year. Um, and we're very focused or narrow in what we do. You can see our tagline on the top of our logo there. We hike with those who can't hike themselves. And so our whole uh, ministry organization is revolving around using that crazy piece of equipment you see there and that you saw on Josh's 5K uh, that allows us to take uh, individuals living with disabilities uh, to places that they would never, ever, ever get to go. That thing will go anywhere I can go, except maybe a ladder, and we could probably figure that out too. So um, interestingly, I, sometimes when I begin a talk or I'm talking to a group about what we do, I have them close their eyes and I say, picture a place that you either have been or that you would like to go or have seen a, a movie or a photo about some epic location and you would dream about going to that place. Now, consider the fact that you are living with a disability or have some sort of mobility challenge and would never, ever, ever get to go to that place. Um, so if you'll, uh, the next slide is of one of those places, that's Red River Gorge, and you're on a cliff side, and that cliff is about 150 feet tall, and you're overlooking uh, you know, the scenery there in central Kentucky. So <clears throat> if you were somebody living with a disability, and we, incidentally, we uh, define disability in the broadest of definitions, meaning any uh, chronic or short-term mobility challenge caused by anything. Um, we've even had um, otherwise able-bodied youngsters that ha have a broken leg or something, and they're just cabin fever and they want to get out but <clears throat> picture yourself living with a disability and you see this picture and it, you don't even dream about going to that place because it's an impossibility it's not just a virtually impossible to get there aside from a helicopter dropping you on that point on planet earth um and so the next picture the next slide um go to that so with this piece of equipment and with a bunch of volunteers, we can get to that place on planet Earth. Same location there, Red River Gorge on the edge of that 150 foot cliff. And so uh, with an army of volunteers and uh, those people trained and and how to safely uh, make this happen, by the way, that young man, he's 30 years old now, Dave Sparby, who's in the, we call that piece of equipment a rosy. It's made by a French company called Jolette, and it's one of only two companies in the world that make anything remotely like this. When I started looking for equipment, I, it was really, really frustrating because there's adaptive equipment for every sport you could even name, from sailing to kayaking to canoeing. You're, you're well aware of all of the adaptive sport equipment out there, except for just regular old hiking in the woods. And I couldn't figure it out. And I looked and looked and looked and finally came across this piece of equipment that's manufactured in France. Well, only after uh, a few times of me saying, yeah, we're going to take that, you know, chair, cycly, off-roady thing out into the woods. And my wife said, man, you just need to give it a name. Just call it something. And uh, the lady, oh, the older uh, lady who was my original inspiration in starting this organization, her name was Debbie Rosen. And so we call these things Rosie after uh, after Deb. So anyway, uh, Dave, who's in, in Rosie, uh, is quadriplegic, uh, has zero muscle control. Uh, he can move his arms slightly. Uh, when he was a teenager, a uh, hay bale fell out of his barn on top of his head, crushed his neck. So for Dave, uh, a literal impossibility to go see and be in a place like that. And it is so soul quenching. I, I struggled early on to um, define 
or understand. You know, I've, I've been a part of a lot of um, adaptive stuff over the years, a, a lot of ministries, service opportunities, mission trips, Habitat for Humanity, you name it, food pantries. And for some reason, this activity just dwarfed all of the rest in its uh, heart tugging and soul quenching uh, attributes. And I couldn't, I couldn't understand why that, and I couldn't answer that question until I started talking to these people. Dave, for instance, uh, on his first hike with us, he stopped short and he said, wait a second, this is the first time in 12 years that I've looked up and out. He said, my entire existence revolves around three, what's three feet in front of my chair. I have to constantly look down. And, um, for him, it was absolutely life-changing 10 minutes into the hike. Um, Mary, who is a young woman that hikes with us very frequently, last year, we, uh, well, two, two years ago, I guess, we went, uh, we started a program that's kind of our version of Make-A-Wish. And these are grander, bigger, epic kind of trips that people raise money, uh, their family to accomplish. And uh, so we had her out in Rocky Mountain National Park uh, hiking up Deer Mountain, which is a 10,000 foot mountain. And if to this day, if you ask Mary about that experience, she says, I hiked up to the top of Deer Mountain at 10,000 feet. She does not say my friends carried me up to the top of Deer Mountain, which is a nuance there, but it's a really, really, really important nuance. And, and Dave's point of view, Mary's point of view, and every other hiker's point of view, they're hiking with us. And, um, and to be able to be in that situation, to be able to be in a literally impossible situation or place on planet earth is really, really special. Um, Mary, uh, incidentally has been to 10,000 feet above sea level. She's also been to 1400 feet below sea level with us at the Dead Sea in Israel. Um, go ahead and go into the next slide. So, uh, we basically, that's what we do. We hike with those who can't hike themselves. We, if you, I often ask people, Hey, if I cut you, what do you bleed? And if you cut us, we bleed partnerships and collaboration. And so we spend, um, so much of our time, uh, collaborating with, uh, organizations like Stepping Stones and like Green County DD, uh, Children's Hospital here in Cincinnati, St. Joseph's Home, CABV, Association for the Blind, uh, Easter Seals, Parks Departments. Um, this particular photograph was uh, a, a campaign that um, the Ohio Parks Department was doing. This parks are for everyone. And so they said, hey, if you'll take a cardboard piece, a piece of cardboard, write on it, take it with you, take some photographs, we'll post them in our, um, in our newsletter or whatever. So uh, go on to the next one. Um, again, partnering with uh, all kinds of organizations. Uh, the, the list kind of goes on and on and on for us. Um, that's probably, I don't know, 60 or 70 percent of what we do is collaborating with an organization. We plan with them, let's say, a monthly hike here in Warren County. Uh, we, we plan a monthly hike in collaboration with Warren County DD and Countryside YMCA. I think that's on one of the next slides. Uh, go ahead and go to that. I can't remember what else, what I wrote, but yeah. So we'll go to Warren County DD. We'll say, hey, we'll, oh, by the way, that's Deb Rosen in, in the chair there, what, where we named Rosie after since, sadly, since, the, since then she has passed away. But uh, so commonly what we'll do is we will say, hey, well, let's let's plan a monthly hike with fill in the blank organization. And, and then we're serving their clients, whether it's Association for the Blind or CAVV or, CAV or Children's Hospital or Ward County DD. And we do a bunch of those. Um, some of the people that are involved in those organizations uh, need to, to be in Rosie. The, the guy behind, he's in the middle of the, um, the bridge there with the white tennis shoes on. He is one of the clients of Warren County DD, who's who's ambulatory. So he just hikes along with us and has fun. Uh, next slide. Um, just more pictures of our countryside hikes. 
uh, with uh, Countryside YMCA as this hundred and some acre nature preserve behind the YMCA. And when you're in the midst of that, if you didn't know any better, you'd think you were somewhere deep in Appalachian Mountains somewhere. Um, and it's right in the backyard of the YMCA there in Lebanon. Next slide. So everything we do is free. We exist uh, on personal and corporate donations and grants and things like that. I covenanted from the get-go, from the very first day, that um, I would much more rather spend all my waking moments trying to find money than to have a conversation with a family about how much this is going to cost. And so uh, we never charge for anything. People can come as often as they want to. We have a lot of frequent flyers, I call them, people who hike with us uh, multiple times a year uh, we, and others that we see once and never see again and everything in between. All ages, like I said, we de define disability in the broadest sense of the word, but also age-wise, our, to date, our youngest hiker was 18 months old, little kid in Meridian, Mississippi, um, needed a vent. 24 seven. So he had tubes going every which way we had to attach his vent to the chair. Uh, his mother was a single mother, like so often happens in the world of disability. Um, very few family and friends and support. And she came out and brought him on the hike and we were midway through our hike and she stopped caravan short. I mean, I thought something had happened to me. It's like, it was like, Three stooges, bang, 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 against each other. And we went, whoa, 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 what happened? And she looked at me and she said, he just reached out and grabbed to hold my finger. That's the first time he's done that. And he said, and she said, in fact, this is the first day in his 18 months of life that I have felt alive. And everybody, of course, just started crying and bawling. Uh, so he's been our youngest hiker to date. Our oldest has, is 98 or was 98 last year. A disabled vet from our Tucson, Arizona chapter. And by the way, we have eight uh, other chapters now that are outside the Cincinnati area. But we do just here in Cincinnati, and I'm calling Cincinnati the greater region, tri-state region. Um, we do going on 400 hikes a year, um, almost year round. In fact, next week, uh, we're going down to Mammoth Cave, um, taking a uh, for uh, people living with disabilities and their families, uh, 200 feet down under the earth, navigating Mammoth Cave. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, it's all free. Um, people can come as often as, as they want to. It's very, very volunteer driven. We're always constantly looking for volunteers because uh, one common thing that we do, it's very typical, um, is we'll work with an organization Warren County DD is a good example. We'll say we'll bring four or five of these pieces of equipment. Uh, you help us with a sign up genius. We'll put bat signal out. We'll do one hike at 530, one hike at seven time, you know, so we can do eight to 12 to 10 people in a given morning or a given evening. Um, yes, we work with very closely with May, like, May We Help. In fact, I was uh, just meeting with them today. But uh, so, uh, can't remember where I was going with that. But anyway, we, we could serve a bunch of people uh, on a given morning or a good given evening, but uh oh, volunteer wise. Um, but in order to do that, we never send this piece of equipment out with fewer than four people. And depending on the weight of the hiker and the severity of the trail, oftentimes we need six or eight, sometimes even 10 uh, to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. So week in and week out, Every week between April and October, we need 20, 25 volunteers, um, and that just gets exhausting after a while. So we're always in on the lookout for volunteers. We're always on the lookout for hikers. So the hiker would be the person in the chair. That's Tyler there, Tyler Woolley in that picture. Um, and uh, so, yeah, next slide. Uh, contact info for me and our ministry, um, website, email, phone number, all of that. Um, yeah, so that's what we do. And uh, we love partnerships. 
We love getting people out to places that they would never ever be able to get to do on their own. And uh, we, like I, I said um, previously, everything is free. When I, I'm talking local activity, the one th exception to that is those big ep epic uh, make a wish kind of activities. We call it hike of a lifetime. But in the last couple of years, we've uh, done one of those to Rocky Mountain National Park, one a three day, two night expedition with a guy in a wheelchair from Cincinnati to Smoky Mountains, uh, to the highest point on the Appalachian Trail, which is in Smoky Mountain National Park. And then last November, and we're repeating that with another fellow uh, here just in a month and a half is uh, Grand Canyon. And uh, in fact, we're premiering a documentary on the Grand Canyon trip uh, a week from Friday here in Mason. Um, that was a three day, two night trip to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and back. In fact, that documentary is called To the Bottom and Back. Um, and then we have done uh, an ascent on Pikes Peak up to 14,000 feet. And uh, it's just crazy the places that we're able to take people that would never be able to do that on their own. So feel, feel free to reach out to me, uh, Patrick. We'd love to get back and do some more stuff with you guys um, in the future. So if anybody wants to sign up for any of those, how do they find out about them? And would they yeah. just reach so out you to you? People or? go to our website, luke5adventures.org. And uh, these little tabs fly in from the side. One is uh, volunteer application and one is hiker application. So uh, the hiker, again, is the person in the chair. So either the hiker or somebody on his or her behalf would fill out the hiker application. That puts them in a database of about uh, 250 other families in the area. And then we send out an email uh, weekly that just says, uh, here's the upcoming five or six events, click here to reserve a spot. And uh, and people do that as they're able. Same thing with volunteers. We have a database of about a little over 500 volunteers in the area and um, send out a mass email every week and people put themselves in the different events and they respond as they're able. Wonderful. Um, let me go ahead and stop sharing yeah, here. Yeah, Patrick, uh, we, between April and October, at least one event uh, almost every week and then sometimes twice a week. Uh, most of those are on Saturday mornings. Um, twice a month, we'll do a Thursday evening. Um, that monthly hike with Warren County DD and Countryside YMCA is on a Thursday evening, uh, the last Thursday of each month, <clears throat> April through October. And then uh, we'll do some periodic stuff with Caesar Creek and Great Parks and Metro Parks of Butler County sometimes in the, on weekday evenings also. And it looks like Michelle had a, a question. Do you have to apply to join the hike and not be a volunteer, for example, if my son would like to join the hike? Yeah, so uh, we want... It's not required, but we want the person who's hiking, the person in the chair to be accompanied by a family member or a caregiver. Um, if they're an adult and they can speak for themselves, um, that's you know, it doesn't not required, but certainly if there's a kid or somebody who needs some extra care. Um, and uh, kids are kids and family members, siblings are all welcome to come along. And so if you're a, a family, with the person living with disability, you would hike, you would sign up the hiker for that event, and then y'all could just come and participate. Um, volunteers would be people that are not related to that hiker or that family, and they're the ones that accomplish the, the pushing and pulling and lifting. Um, it, you, you guys know, you know, firsthand the difficulty that families living uh, that are impacted by disabilities. Are, you know, their, their lifestyle, their stresses, their schedule is so demanding as 24 seven. And I, I've had so many really touching conversations and photographs of this where mom and there's a kid maybe that has the, the living with a disability. And then a mom and dad are just walking back on the trail, holding hands and lingering back. You know, early on, I would, I would ask the parents if they'd like to help push and pull. And almost invariably, they'd say, no, 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 whatever. And 
at, at first I interpreted that like they were either fearful or didn't know the equipment or whatever. But soon I learned that, no, we, we just want to walk back on the trail, hold hands and have like normal adult talk and just hang out uh, with each other. So that's a kind of a side benefit to this whole thing. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And if anybody has any more questions, just keep putting them in the chat and, you know, we'll address them. Um, we have one more. Andrea, are you on? I think she had come in by phone call. Maybe not. Andrea? All right. I will go ahead. Um, Andrea, if you are on, you can jump in, but I'll go ahead and talk about a few other um, just things of interest. Um, when you go to the Google Salt Drive, all the all the flyers, the presentations, and everything that was sent to me is on that Google Salt Drive, as well as some other resource links to Warren, Green, and Montgomery counties. Um, and if there's anything specific you want to, you know, check into, just, you know, you can reach out to me or if it's something specific to one of these camps or these um, activities, you, you know, you have the contact information uh, for each of these um, speakers. But let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. And Andrea, if you are in there, you can jump in at any time. So one second while I find... Um, so I wanted to share, um, we, I had Andrea was going to speak on uh, Montgomery County. Hey, Patty, can you unmute her? I can't. She's oh, okay. To... She's trying to, okay, one second. Let me see if I can go to there. Um. Yeah, it won't let me unmute. Doesn't look like I can unmute her either. One second, let me try one other. It shows her phone, but it shows it as muted. Um, oh, there we go. Well, it's not unmuting as far as I can see. Yeah. He hello, Patty. Oh, there you can go. You okay. Me? Yep. Now I can hear you. I pulled your website up, Andrea. Oh, thank you so much, Patty. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Parker with Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disability Services. Um, I just wanted to talk. We have two parts of our recreation program. Patty, I'm not really sure what you have pulled up. But if you go to our website, which is um, www.mcbdds.org, and then once you get into our website, there's, um, there's a portion where it goes to services, and then it talks about our recreation program. We are there. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Patty. Mm -hmm. So... Hello, um, I just want to let everybody know that we kind of have two recreation programs. If you are ages six and up, we have a recreation program for kids. And I believe it is on our website. You can call or email Ginger Muse. And I believe possibly, Patty, that's on the page you're showing. I'm not sure. Yes, it is. And the Children's Recreation Program is going to serve children ages six to 17. Uh, the recreation coordinator or a recreation assistant will conduct assessments to determine the staff level for individuals. And we also have a children's respite program, which can provide any type of staffing level. Community outings levels are going to be three individuals for every staff person. And I have not been involved with the children's recreation program for many years, but I know that they they get out and they do a lot of fun things. So your best bet is going to be to call to find out what openings they have or what their schedule is going to be. Now, our most popular area is the adult recreation program. They serve in individuals ages 18 through senior citizens. 
and the recreation staff will conduct assessments for individuals to determine levels. So that is a big thing with Montgomery County DDS recreation. They wanna make sure they have enough staff around with the individuals to work with them. And so one of the things you're gonna to have to do to get involved with our recreation program is you're gonna to have to call. And the recreation manager is Kathy Duffin. And her phone number, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to you, is gonna be 937-918-2110. So what happens with our rec program with the adults is they send out a mailing every year and they want you to register prior to these recreation events. So a lot of times we will go to the Dragons game or do different things throughout the Montgomery County area and making sure that we have enough staff as well as you know people attending. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, the past couple of years, we've been able to make some trips to Disney World and a lot of people have enjoyed that. So, but the big thing is with our rec program, everyone is to register and to talk to Kathy to find out what needs the person may need for this. But a lot of times our recreation events may occur at our, one of our locations, which is gonna be Northview School or Southview School. And so when you are registering for these events, if you are living north of town, you probably wanna pick Northview. If you're gonna be living south of town, you're gonna to probably wanna pick Southview. So Patty, I am not really sure what else to provide about our recreation program except Kathy Duffin's phone number and our website and just encouraging people to call and to find out what our events are. Sounds good. And I had up um, so everybody can see the website. So um, when you go in under services again, recreation program, mm -hmm. um, and then you have all the how to register and every here on the left side and the at the overview, you can find Kathy's, um, let's see what's Kathy's, I guess it wasn't overview is, I guess go back in here, recreation yeah, program. Overview, and then we also have and the recreation Zoom schedule. Yes, there's a recreation Zoom schedule then for you guys to click on as well. And now mm -hmm. for the Zoom or is everything, do they have to be part of Montgomery County Board of DD for all the events or is it for some of the events? You do have to be Montgomery County Board of DDS eligible. Um, there have been some instances where maybe they're going through the eligibility process. You're just gonna have to call and talk to um, Kathy, and she can look up everything to confirm if it is okay to go ahead and register. Um, it, it's kind of hard for me to answer that, but you can go ahead and give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. One of the things I wanted to make a point um, for any family who's interested, I know this was Montgomery County Board, but there are other county boards. Go to your, um, you can call your um, County Board of DD your develop, you know, County Board of Developmental Disabilities and see what recreational programs are offered through them in your area. So if you're with Warren County, they have a recreational program or if you're with Butler County or one other county, just go to that county board and um, you know, check with them. And it looks like, yeah, we have the Patty, links out I there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I just want to throw out there too if you are already involved with montgomery county or i'm guessing any other county boards if you reach out to your ssa they can also provide that information for you yes so that would be good and i see um kevin did you want to get in touch with you or you have a montgomery county where you're referring to andrea who's on the phone Okay, so Andrea, I'm going to send you um, Kevin's information from Luke 5 Adventures. Wonderful. Okay, and we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then let's see, we have just a, a minute or two. So let me get it up here real quick. Just I won't be real long with this one. I just want to make sure um, 
Let me share my screen again. Just for those in general, um, for those who don't know, we have our live binder. I want to be sure I, I brought this up because I want to make sure everybody knows where to look. So we have our SALT series serving Southwest Ohio. It's our live binder where I put all the resources I can get my hands on in here. So you'll see over here in the left tab, there's all kinds of information, everything from advocacy to guardianship to special needs trust, everything. But down here, and I highlighted it in yellow, um, there was also one for camps up here. Hold on a second, let me go back up here. So I have camps in yellow. Um, and you'll see there will be all kinds of um, camp information in there um, with the different, like I have uh, opportunities for Ohioans with disabilities. Sometimes they are, you know, they're um, hosting camps and stuff. So I have that information there. But if you go further down, there's also a recreation, which SST 10, which uh, would be around the Dayton area, um, the different counties but they have a camp guide in there, which is also in our Google Salt Drive. But then you have some around um, the Cincinnati area, um, recreational flyers, and you can click on any of these. Um, here I have, I put, I did put Luke 5 in here um, from a previous presentation, but Best Buddies program, there's you know all kinds of information you can look at on your own through here and i even have a link to night to shine when it comes around to that february 9th when you're getting in december you can check up the check out the night to shine activities so i just wanted to be sure that you saw that if you ever have any questions how to navigate the live binder you know just holler and i'll be glad to um i'll be glad to walk you through it so um is there any other questions out there one second All right, thank you, thank you, Patrick, for VerySpecialCamps.com. I'll I'll add that because, like I said, I grab whatever I can get my hands on. So, does anybody have any other questions for our speakers tonight? Any um, any other questions or any other thoughts? Um, any concerns about your child going to camp? Um, I know as a parent, sometimes that concern, especially like if you're going for an overnight camp. You know, my child you know, is on, you know, either oxygen or something, or my child takes a lot of medication or needs a lot of attention. Um, sometimes parents are a little bit nervous about sending their child away overnight uh, for an activity um, in that separation. I don't know. I guess, Patrick, you would be, you know, the one to, you know, with being an overnighter on some of your camps. Yeah. I, I don't blame you. You know, I mean, I, th I think a, a lot of the parents that we talk to and, and a lot of the parents that we try to not convince, but, 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 you know, talk, you know, about the benefits of attending overnight camp, worry about that exact same thing. And I think for them, it, you know, really comes down to we're, we're always happy to answer questions. You know, there, there's nothing that you can't ask that's, uncomfortable or inappropriate or not something that matters because you know the more you share about the individual you're working with um or, or that your your loved one the more you know it helps us figure out how to best serve them and I'll, I'll just say this you know from personal experience I have an older brother with developmental disabilities he has autism and um you know I'm lucky enough to have a great you know family that is a great support system for him but I will say that him as an adult is a very different person than him as a, a kid. And a lot of that really was related to how much my parents, how much I, how much the support system that he had was willing and able to let him kind of, you know, be independent, experience things on his own, try and fail and do a lot of those things that adults do that, you know, we may take for granted that we don't allow people with disabilities to do. And I, I think, you know, sh shamelessly, I would say our programs, we're trying to provide that opportunity for families to let go, um, but let go in, a, in a, an environment that they feel a certain level of comfort about. 
And, you know, I, I would just also say that if you have those kind of questions or that kind of concerns or uh, want to talk through that myself, as well as the staff that work at Stepping Sense, a lot of us, you know, we, we have direct connections in the, the disability world and, and know what you're kind of talking about. And so, you know, we're happy to talk through those things and, and we're, you know, we don't want people to attend programs that we feel are going to be unsuccessful. So we're really, you know, welcoming and, and hoping that we'll make sure that the programs, and I, I would say, you know, without knowing Kevin or any of those other individuals, that we want to make sure that the programs that you're attending and the, the experiences that you have are ones that are successful and make you feel, you know, like, like it, it's helping you grow as an individual. So nothing wrong with asking questions. And if you've got any reservations, bring those to the table and talk with us about those, be frank, because we're happy to work through those and help you figure out if uh, our program's a good fit. And if not, if there's another one that's a better fit, we're, we're just happy to help facilitate, you know, the transition to independence. And I see um, there was a question, it would, I guess, or a statement, um, would be great to have more overnight camps serving individuals with a higher support needs on a ratio of one to two or one to one. Yep. Yep. And, and, and we're, 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 you know, looking at the possibilities for those, you know, duplication of services. If you're using waiver funding to pay for the, the program as well as the support staff, I know is a problem. So those are things that we're actively, you know, working on. So Kathy, you know, please feel free to talk to me, you know, um, email me or uh, let's, let's set up a meeting to talk because I agree. I, I, I think that our programs, the more we can serve individuals with differing needs, the better. And I think, you know, looking forward, we're, we're just trying to figure out ways to make that happen as best as possible. But um, yeah, re reach out to me. I'm always happy to talk. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Um, Kevin, question for you would be, um, if a person, parent, or someone, you know, either tonight or listening to this recording later, you know, what if they want to start a chapter in their area that maybe you don't have a Luke five adventures yet? Do they reach out to you on your website or? Yeah, uh, uh, you can use the chat thing on our website or as you circulate this, my email is on there. But those inquiries would come through me um, because we're a faith based organization. We we run all of our chapters through local churches. We would absolutely love to have one in the Columbus area. We do have one in Cleveland. Uh, and then our chapter serves uh, all the way up into Dayton area and down into Northern Kentucky and Southeast Indiana. Uh, we would also love to have one over uh, Southeast, you know, somewhere around, you know, Southeast uh, Lancaster or someplace down in the Hocking Hills area. But yeah, so those inquiries can come to me and we'll just work through what all that means. Wonderful. I guess I know there'll be some people listening and saying, well, is there one in our area or how do we get one in our area? So, <laughs> so thank you all for, for speaking tonight. Um, again, these, all this, the presentation and information is out there on our Google salt drive. We did record tonight. Um, and I'll close the recording here in a minute in case someone wants to unmute, but um, it's recorded tonight. So if you're listening and you, have questions you can always email me as well um, and my email is always available within the um, the YouTube so one second while I close the recording and again thank you everybody for attending and for for you guys as speakers so one second while I close this